Welcome everyone to this session of the Indiana Leeds Summer Tax Workshop Series. I'm Leandra Letterman from Indiana University Maurer School of Law, and it's my pleasure to co-host with Dr. Leopoldo Prada from the University of Leeds. So let me now turn it over to him to introduce himself and today's speakers. Thank you very much, uh, Leandra, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us uh, today as well. Um, we have uh, the pleasure of uh, of having today two uh, young scholars and, uh, and very promising scholars, Stefan Hamel and Lily Sechner, who are research and teaching assistants at the Department of Tax Law and Fiscal Law at the University of Graz in Austria. Both uh, the PhD projects uh, focus on different questions uh, related to the taxation of digital economy. Lily holds a law degree and for her PhD project, she received a three-year research grant from the University, from the Austrian Academy of Sciences. And uh, Stefan holds uh, degrees in business administration, economics, and law. I should also mention that Lily is also confirmed as a visiting PhD researcher in the Indiana University Maui School of Law for this fall 2021. So she will spend three months, uh, three consecutive months uh, with, uh, with Leandra Lederman and other fantastic scholars uh, also there. So Stefan, uh, Lily, thank you very much for being with us. And now the floor is entirely yours. Hello everyone. Thank you so much, Leandra and Leopoldo for having us. It's an honor to be here today and to be able to share our research with all of you. Um, we merged our slides. So I'll be speaking for the first half of this presentation and then Stefan will take over and cover the second part of the presentation. I will go ahead and share my slides. So as you probably know, our paper um, is on SSRN uh, and we'd be happy to send you a later draft uh, if you're interested. Feedback and comments are most welcome and we're really looking forward to the discussion later on. Um, so I'll start right off. This article grew out of research that Stefan and I uh, were both individually doing for our PhD thesis, um, which as Leopoldo mentioned, deal with questions relating to digital business models and taxation. Stefan focuses on the income tax treatment of data-driven multi-sided business models. And I focus on um, the, European, <laughs> sorry, the European Union's value-added tax uh, and the platform economy. We often discuss questions relating to our PhD projects. Um, and at some point we were talking about uh, the fact that this idea that taxation should take place in market jurisdictions was gaining traction, not only in EU value added tax, but also incorporating income tax. Uh, now there is widespread agreement that consumption taxes should be levied in market jurisdictions. Um, but as you all know, um, this is not yet the case for corporate income tax. In EU value added tax, um, destination based taxation is already gradually being implemented, whereas in corporate income tax, the OECD G20 inclusive framework on BEPS um, has proposed so far um, to introduce a new power to tax um, for, uh, or a new power to impose taxes for market jurisdictions. And the OECD's Pillar 1 proposal, or Pillar one blueprint, as um, we call it, um, consolidates various proposals uh, to, um, or that provide for taxation in market jurisdictions. Um, it's quite long, but it's not very detailed. So some questions as to how to implement this concept are still being discussed at the level of the inclusive framework. Um, and we'll talk about the details of that uh, later on. First of all, I'll go on and talk about why destination-based taxation is becoming increasingly popular in um, legislatures around the world. Um, and the answer to that is because taxing profit and consumption in market jurisdictions um, or in jurisdictions where the customers are located is set to reduce opportun opportunities for tax avoidance. This is particularly true for highly digitalized business models, um, which don't rely on physical assets uh, and can easily be structured with a view to minimizing tax burdens. So it's considered more equitable. 
what's the downside? Um, tax compliance and tax enforcement are generally more difficult in uh, market jurisdictions than in jurisdictions where suppliers have some form of physical presence. Um, suppliers may not be within reach of tax authorities in jurisdictions where the customers, but not the suppliers are based. And suppliers have to determine the market jurisdiction and potentially register in numerous states uh, for the purpose of declaring and paying taxes. So it's considered less administrable. Taxpayers and tax authorities therefore likely face difficulties and high costs in connection with taxing profit and consumption in market jurisdictions unless legislators find ways to facilitate the application of the new rules and to facilitate tax compliance and tax enforcement. So how can this be done? Um, we explain in the paper that special regulatory tools can help administer taxation in market jurisdictions. For instance, structural enforcement mechanisms that allow for simplified registration and filing procedures or simplifying proxies. Proxies are an example of rough justice um, and create legal rights or obligations on the basis of a typical case without considering the particulars of each individual case. So the typical case serves as a standard for other cases. And this can provide for more tax certainty and can reduce disputes between taxpayers and tax authorities. Now it is said that proxies create tension between administrability of the tax system and equity on the one hand, and then equity for taxpayers on the other hand, because compliance and enforcement considerations take precedence over the facts of each individual case. At the level of the EU and the level of the EU member states, um, proxies may infringe upon the basic principle of equality um, because they mandate the equal treatment of potentially different situations. So they require justification. And what we do in the paper is analyze selected proxies aimed at making taxation in market jurisdictions um, more administrable in relation to the EU's VAT, the Austrian digital tax, and the Pillar 1 proposal. In EU VAT law, um, rules that provide for destination-based taxation have partly already been implemented. So uh, we make, or we could make a detailed assessment of uh, the proxies employed. And we could explain in the paper uh, why we believe that those proxies can be considered in line with um, the principle of equal treatment as interpreted by the European Court of Justice, uh, but also um, the Austrian and German constitutional courts. And obviously, we weren't able to do that yet with regard to um, the proxies proposed under Pillar 1, because we don't yet exactly know what they're going to look like. Um, but Stefan will talk about some of the proxies uh, employed in EU VAT law and their similarities to those under uh, the Pillar 1 proposal. Ultimately, what uh, we underline is that taxation of profit and consumption in market jurisdictions can be administered through the use of proxies in addition to structural enforcement mechanisms, but these proxies must ensure an appropriate balance between equity and administrability. And we highlight that destination-based taxation must be equitable and administrable. Specifically in Austria and Germany, this is a legal necessity because the constitu constitutional courts have held that essentially unenforceable uh, substantive tax rules uh, infringe upon the basic principle of equality and are unconstitutional. The idea behind this is that um, substantive tax laws that are confronted with considerable enforcement uh, difficulties lead to inequitable results with regard to how much of the tax similarly situated taxpayers owe is actually paid by each of them. Um, a highly nuanced tax system that is equitable in theory can lead to inequitable results if it's applied inequitably. So if scores of taxpayers are unable to comply or um, can avoid or even evade taxes due to these considerable enforcement risks. One of the challenges in terms of tax policy is to find and preserve this balance between equity and administrability in times of rapid technological and economic change. And with that, I will hand over to Stefan, uh, who will give examples of the proxies we looked at uh, that are partly tailored to digital business models. All right, thanks, Lily. Um, so now I want to um, illustrate uh, the points that uh, Lily was making in her part of the presentation. 
And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, and I want to first start off with uh, European VAT law and go back a few years um, in, into the past, namely the year 2015. Um, it was a particularly interesting year for EU VAT law because uh, this year marked really a big shift towards taxing electronically supplied services in market jurisdictions. Um, I can probably best illustrate uh, this by giving, by giving an example. If, for example, I bought an app uh, for my smartphone before the year 2015 from a supplier that was, for example, resident in Luxembourg, this supply was actually taxed in Luxembourg where the supplier was resident and at the comparably low Luxembourgian VAT rate. And this also meant that the VAT was due in Luxembourg. Nowadays, if I, as a consumer resident in Austria, uh, buy an app from a supplier in, for example, Luxembourg, this supply is no longer taxable uh, in Luxembourg, but rather uh, in Austria, where I, the consumer, am resident. And so nowadays, or since 2015, we have, at least uh, in this regard, a more level and equitable uh, playing field for the suppliers of electronically uh, supplied services. So it um, doesn't uh, really matter that much for your corporate structure um, uh, decision, um, what, what uh, the VAT rate uh, is um, uh, where you're resident because it's taxed anyway at uh, the VAT rate uh, in the respective market jurisdiction. So it's perfectly legitimate to introduce such a, a tax regime but what you have to consider is its administrability. And um, the European legislator was certainly aware of that, um, which we can see by the accompanying measures that were introduced uh, along the shift, uh, alongside the shift towards taxing in market jurisdictions. Uh, one of them being that platform operators were made uh, liable uh, for the VAT on those uh, uh, services um, through a proxy in the implementing regulation. Uh, additionally, uh, other proxies were introduced that, uh, for example, help to ascertain, um, okay, is your customer a business or a consumer? Because that, um, that plays a, a, a big role in uh, the treatment of the services. And also, um, they help, those proxies help you to determine um, where your customer is actually a resident or where the market jurisdiction is, because that's often not a priori that clear cut to see. Um, and a big part, um, a really a, a key feature, uh, was the introduction uh, of the one-stop shop mechanism. Um, again, it's probably best to explain it uh, by giving an example. Um, if you do not have, um, if you're a supplier of electronically supplied services and you do not, you would not have the opportunity of the one-stop shop mechanism, and your customers, which are consumers, are based all around the European Union. This would mean for you that you would have to um, register, um, file, declare, and pay the VAT in each uh, respective EU member state, um, which would be uh, quite uh, burdensome from a, a tax compliance uh, point of view. And what the one-stop shop is, uh, does is it helps you to avoid all that. You can choose just one uh, member state of the EU and fulfill all your uh, VAT obligations regarding those uh, services um, in just that one member state. And this one member state is then obliged to forward the VAT payment to the respective market jurisdictions. Um, now let's go back to the future, um, actually six days in the, in the future uh, from uh, the coming uh, first day, we will have uh, a broad uh, taxation uh, in market jurisdictions um, with regards to European VAT, which now also includes physical goods. There's uh, generally, uh, broadly speaking, uh, just a, a small de minimis uh, limit, but uh, uh, you, can, you can really say that this is now not the exception, but the rule that supplies are taxed uh, in the market jurisdictions. And uh, strikingly similar to um, what we saw in the year 2015, we now see again um, several accompanying measures that are um, aimed at um, keeping uh, 
this tax regime administrable. We see additional platform operators being made uh, liable for the VAT, including uh, now a certain uh, supplies of physical goods. We see additional proxies being introduced and we see the one-stop shop being expanded to now also uh, include the supplies of those physical goods, which are now also possible to declare um, through the one-stop shop mechanism. And if we go even further into the future, um, into the year 2022, um, you see here the big question mark. Um, it's, it's not actually certain if, if uh, the year two, if the next year will actually bring um, the, the, uh, the proposed measures to fruit. But what is uh, being discussed in uh, corporate income taxation is, um, Similarly, a shift towards taxing in a uh, market jurisdiction, uh, namely under uh, the amount A of pillar one. Uh, amount A would uh, mean that some portion of the residual profit of certain uh, large enterprises uh, would be uh, taxed in market jurisdictions. Um, again, uh, a key consideration uh, behind this decision is um, counteracting tax avoidance because uh, your customers are relatively immobile compared to uh, your corporate structures. Your corporate uh, structures are more easily um, uh, designed in a way to uh, maximize uh, your, your tax benefits or minimize your tax burden. Um, then you can uh, shift, shift around your customer base um, if, if, you, if you want. Uh, and uh, Again, perfectly a legitimate decision, but you have to keep in mind how can you um, keep uh, such a system um, uh, administrable. And what we see is um, abundant use being made of proxies, for example, uh, for revenue sourcing uh, to determine where is the market jurisdiction actually, what is the market jurisdiction, because that is not a priori uh, clear cut. Um, uh, if you deviate from the uh, permanent establishment as a reference point for profit attribution, um, you uh, have to think about other reference points that are, um, that are suited um, for this purpose. And um, those revenue sources, uh, sourcing rules um, make abundant use of proxies. Um, and what we similarly see to the developments in VAT law, uh, is uh, sort of a concentration of the tax liability um, towards uh, fewer entities. Uh, in the AT law, uh, law, those were the platform operators. And um, with uh, amount A, uh, what is being envisaged is that there is a single paying entity within the multinational enterprise that actually owes the amount A due under uh, pillar one. Uh, and this single paying entity, again, similar to um, the uh, developments that we saw in VAT law, uh, will probably be able to make use of sort of a one-stop shop mechanism, namely to file and uh, pay the amount A tax liability with the so-called lead tax administration. So in just one jurisdiction, and that jurisdiction um, would probably be obliged to forward um, the uh, tax due under amount A, but uh, the details are not fully fleshed out uh, at the moment. Let's see what the coming months bring um, with this regard. But I think it's fair, it's a fair assessment to uh, say that the uh, developments bear a striking similarity to what we saw uh, in uh, European VAT law. And with that, I'm at the end and um, want to sum up um, the results. And what I would say is that um, if you um, decide to tax profit and consumption market jurisdictions, you can reduce the opportunities for tax avoidance, which can uh, further equity. But it is important um, to um, be aware that um, taxation market jurisdictions is fraught with difficulties regarding both tax compliance and enforcement, which can negatively uh, impact the administrability of such a tax regime. And consequently, you have to um, think about uh, introducing special regulatory regimes such as proxies or other uh, structural enforcement mechanisms to ensure 
both equity and administrability of the tax system. And now um, at the end, I want to thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking uh, very much forward to the discussion. Mm -hmm.